Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'm going to continue my discussion on EMC consideration. Today, I'm going to do a intro. What is magnetic or inductive coupling? This will be the part nine series of discussion on EMC. The earlier on series of discussion on EMC, the video link I have put it available under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to find out more regards on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by like and subscribe. Please smash the like and subscribe button now. Thank you so much, guy. We have been talking about electric coupling on the previous few video. Okay, so I want to quickly revisit this video to ensure that you understand why we also need to consider H field or magnetic coupling. Okay, under the near field, okay, we have either the E field predominant or H field predominant. Okay, today we are going to concentrate on this H field, which also called inductive coupling. Okay, so what is inductive coupling or magnetic field coupling? Okay, magnetic field or inductive coupling occurs when energy is coupled from one conductor to another through a magnetic field. For magnetic field or inductive coupling, current are the source of magnetic field and therefore hence it's most likely to happen when the impedance of the source circuit is low. So in short, you can see that this is a contact or a cable. So they have a very low impedance and when current actually flow, okay, you actually learn this in your school day, actually there is some magnetic flux that release Okay, so this is what we know as magnetic field. Okay, so this is how magnetic field or inductive coupling actually occur. When there's a current flow, it actually releases the magnetic field. And that's how we have this issue of magnetic field coupling or inductive coupling. So take a look on this circuit here. Okay, for example, this is where the noise source is. Okay, so the victim is just nearby. And then the energy just couple over the magnetic energy couple over and affect the victim. Okay, so this is some brief idea how magnetic field coupling actually occur. Okay, we're going to go in depth on this again. Okay, so this is the equivalent circuit of magnetic field or inductive coupling. Okay, so this is the okay, or we call it conductor one. This is conductor two. So, like what I mentioned, if conductor one when there is a current flow, okay, so there will be coupling, magnetic coupling actually occur. Any wire, okay, they can be represented by a inductor. Okay, so basically this is the rep representative of one wire. So when the energy couple over, okay, it become a voltage source, and this Vn is equal to J omega coupling coefficient one to two. Okay, with respect to I1. Okay, I1 is the current flow in conductor one. Okay, so this is the amount of Vn actually coupled over. We know that the emitter of inductor is equal to this. This is the emitter of inductor. Okay, is equal to J omega L. Omega is 2 pi F. Okay, so if we want to find the emittance of L2, okay, so we can represent this J omega L2 as the emitter of inductor two. Okay, let's take a look on the victim side here. So this is the noise coupled over from conductor one to conductor two. So it's basically this is the noise. Okay, we, we put this V prime N okay, to denote that uh, this is the noise that coupled over. Okay, so this is what we want to find out. So in short, if you take a look, these are all in series. Okay, and if we want to find the voltage drop on this V prime N, okay, we can actually use the voltage divider rule. So this is the source, which is Vn. If we want to find V prime N, which mentioned here, okay, what we can do is Vn multiplied by R over all the emitter in series. So this includes this R, 
R2 and also the admittance of inductor L2. So this is how we arrive at this equation. Next, we know that Bn is equal to J omega M12 I1. So we actually replace this Bn is over here, JW M12 I1 here. So let's do some assume in order to simplify the equation. Let's assume R is equal to R2. So this become 2R here. So this is the noise that couple over from conductor one to conductor two. So this B prime N is actually the noise, the voltage noise that drop across the resistance, okay, which is normally the bit dim here. Okay, so this is the resulting circuit on the bit dim. Okay, so we will go through this in more detail on the next slides. Let's derive the equation. Okay, so this is the equation that we had derived earlier. Okay, again, I like to analyze on two factor. One is on low frequency, another one is on high frequency. Let's take a closer look on the low frequency. Okay, when the frequency is low, okay, we can take a look on this denominator here. When the frequency is low, okay, so this number will be a very small number. Okay, we can assume that 2R is many, many times larger than J omega L2 here. So this is how we arrive this. And we can rewrite the equation. So since 2R okay, is much, much bigger than this J omega L2, we can remove away this J omega L2. And this is how we get this equation. Okay, there's some common term, which is the R. I cancel off. I have this equation here. So this is the noise couple from conductor one to conductor two at low frequency. Next, let's do a very quick study on high frequency. On high frequency, okay, the J omega L2, they are much, much bigger than 2R. So I actually can ignore the 2R. So this is how I arrive at this equation. Okay, I ignore the 2R. Okay, so this is the equation over here and I rewrite the equation here. Okay, again, from here, there are some similar item here. So for example, J omega I can cancel off. And this is how I arrive the noise couple over from conductor to one to conductor two at high frequency. Okay, again, okay, I can plot a graph with respect to frequency versus the noise. Okay, on the earlier on equation, you can see that okay, this is the noise that I couple over at low frequency. Okay, you can see that it's a function of frequency. Hence, when frequency increase they actually also increase. Something quite similar with electric field coupling until it reach high frequency. Okay, another set of formula actually come into the picture. Okay, so from this formula, you can see that it's not a respect of frequency. And you can also see that it almost like a DC source. Okay, which means that the noise voltage actually will saturate and then they become a flat line. Okay, so this is the magnetic field coupling under low and high frequency. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.